know, we have the meat provided. Someone else already volunteered for the dessert. I just need a couple of times. You guys are awesome. Let her know. Saturday is special needs. You are one of the main service at Santa Claus Teacher. It's a great time had by all. I can highly encourage you guys to come. And the last time I had a chance, I do, because they are such great people to talk to. And that's all I'm looking for is someone to talk to and listen to all. But it is a great time for anyone who comes. Two weeks from today is our bike blessing. Uh, we will be having an outside service. <coughs> really awesome. I can't wait. But we'll also be doing our bike blessing. It is for everyone from the church, not just the motorcycle ministry. I encourage you all, if you want to help help us out, because we plan on cooking food, we plan on praying with people. I plan sure what else we got going on. We're finding that out on Tuesday. So next week I'll have more information on that for you. All right. All right. Okay, would you all please stand and worship with us? Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. <coughs>
hard? No. Uh, taking responsibility, that's a hard thing to do sometimes, isn't it? Amen? Yeah. We're going to take up our offering. <coughs> Gentlemen, of you come forward. Father, thank you for an opportunity, God, for us to assemble together and then to be part of what you're doing in this service. God, we pray that you would bless the offering as we take part in what you're doing in the lives of so many. Thank you for what you've allowed us to be part of it, God, as we invest in what you're doing. We just pray that it would be used wise, God, that you would accumulate it and we could see it do amazing things that only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Was it? What was that? <laughs> well, so. But it, anyway, it is different. And some of the things that are different are more than what immediately meets your eyes when you walk through the door. What are the things that are going on that are very significant is the fact that God is doing significant things in individuals' lives who are very unlikely in the eyes of the church. Did you hear that? Because the church so many times in America has an idea of what it should look like and they mold people to that particular character instead of what God wants to mold you to look like. And as a result, they miss out on a lot of the things that God wants to do. Well, the Apostle Paul said, all things to all men that you might reach some. So that means you've got to cover a little bit more turf than this little square. And so when I look into the Bible and I say, what can I tell you that could show a picture of individuals that were used in a very unlikely way? Particular scriptures come to mind. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, if you turn to Joshua in the second chapter, Joshua 2, 1. Then Joshua, son of Nun, secretly sent two spies from Shittim. Go, look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. So they went, and they entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab, and stayed there. The kings of Jericho, of Jericho was told, look, some of the Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent this message to Rahab. Bring out the men who came to, your, to you and entered your house, because they have come to spy out the whole land. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. She said, yes, the men had came to me, but I did not know where they had come from at dusk. When it was time to close the city gate, they left. I don't know which way they went. Go after them quick, quickly. You may catch them. You may catch up with them. But she had not taken, they, she had taken them to the roof and hidden them under some stalks of flax. She laid out on the roof. So the men set out in pursuit of the spies on the road that leads to the fords of the Jordan. And as soon as the pursuers had gone out, the gate was shut. Before the spies lay down for the night, she went up to the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land, and that a great fear, what a great fear you have fallen on us, so that all who live in this country are melting with fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. And what you did to Siloam and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, who you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear, and everyone, everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is the God of heaven above and all the earth below. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a, a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and my mother and my brothers and sisters and all that belong to them and that you will save us from death. Our lives for your lives, the men assured her. If you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us the land. So she let them down on a rope through the window, for her house she lived in was part of the city wall. She said to them, Go to the hills, so that your pursuers will not find, find you. Hide yourself for three days until they return, and then go on your way. Rahab. Rahab was a prostitute. God changed her story from prostitute to hero. Amen? Amen. You know what a mind-blowing, mind-blowing fact is of Rahab? 
that Jesus is from the lineage of this woman. You hear what I'm saying? The Messiah came from the lineage of this woman. And so many times people don't realize that somebody can be caught in the middle of, of their life pursuing things that they perceive as answers for their issues. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it's they're trying to have some sort of value in society. Sometimes they're looking for an identity in all different things. And somehow, God invades your world with circumstances that cause you to make decisions that change the rest of your life. When I think of this story, and I realize how many different people have their lives that have been altered in this picture. If we allow God the freedom to enter our lives through circumstances as they begin to unfold and we're looking for what he may do in and through our circumstances. A lot of times we pick up the Bible and as you start to read, you'll start to read the genealogy or th things like that in the Bible and it's very difficult reading, but you understand in the New Testament, in the 11th, or rather the first chapter of Matthew, verses 1 through 16, you'll find the information that links Rahab to Jesus. Very significant fact when you start looking at our lives, and so many times we feel defeated in the things that we're trying to accomplish, and we see ourselves as we've made maybe one too many mistakes. Maybe we can't go from where we are to something that God would use, and it really is all in our head. God wants to do something so much bigger than just the experience that we're living in right now. But he invades our world, and he has the opportunity to do so when we get out of our own thinking, and we allow him to get into our thinking. We begin to see circumstances that look different than what they used to look like. We begin to to respond differently when we see somebody that's having a struggle. We begin to act differently when somebody needs to be forgiven in our lives. We begin to have a heart that looks a little bit more like Jesus when we realize that it's truly Jesus that said, He came to set the captives free. And when we comprehend that the way that He frees us is freeing us from some of the thinking that goes on in our own head that holds us completely captive to a mindset that this world has. And friends, some of the things that the world holds against the church today, and when I say the church, I'm referring to the Church of America that we know it very well, that people would say it's full of hypocrites and all these different things that they would hold to its charge is the very thinking of the world that has merged its way into a society, the church, and as a result, it has built walls against itself. Are you with me? And so when you think about making a change in that, it isn't saying, well, I don't want that crazy bearded freaking looking preacher. I don't want to listen to anything he has to say. I don't want nothing to do with him. It's none of that. How about this? How about just take a, a, a moment and realize that change becomes reality when we change our mind and do what God says. You hear what I'm saying? And that happens one individual at a time. One individual at a time. Years ago, somebody had walked through the center aisle of this church. Way back when I was a lay person, I was sitting right up in the third seat right over here. And I got up, and this individual was ready to leave the church. And you know what it was about? Decorations. It was about decorations. And you know what the issue was? They didn't like the decorations because they did home interior decorating. And they, this wasn't up to par. It's like, do you think maybe you're the piece of the puzzle that'll change what this looks like? That isn't the way it is today, and we, we're not much about decorating here. But, <laughs> but you get the picture, don't you? That maybe sometimes if we can change our mind about looking at others in such a negative way and start to realize God wants to invade our world with us listening to him and making changes. But things stay the same when we just go through life the way that we understand things. And so many times you hear people say, well, I was born that way, that's just the way I am. We're sharper than that, aren't we, folks? 
and I've learned a lot of things over the years. I've learned a lot of things. I've, I've learned a lot of things that once I became a Christian and really started getting into the Word, I learned a lot of things that I unlearned. Because I realized something, that the very things, the very things that Jesus went to the cross for, those very things are destructive in my life in the lives of those around me. So if I want to be used of God, I need to understand that He has the ability, despite the frailty of who we are, He has the ability to do incredible things if we'll let Him. He'll take us where we're at today and do incredible things. But here's the part that people get stalled out on. We really get freaked out with this. That God doesn't call us, He says, listen, He'll take you where you are right now today and do amazing things with your life. But here's the thing. He always wants us to keep growing. Don't be conforming to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of what? Your mind. The renewing of our mind. In other words, I changed my mind. I don't think that way any longer. Why? Because he's brought me to a new understanding. And then when I come to a place that I don't understand, when I find myself in a rut where I just feel like, oh God, what's all this about? He says, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He'll make your path straight. Amen. So we find ourselves at this tug of war, if you will. Because it's frightening to go out into uncharted waters. It's frightening to find ourselves at a place that we can say, well, God used me today, and I know there's a day on the calendar that I marked, and I'm absolutely certain that he had presence in my life. But I dug my heels in, and I said, I'm not moving from where I'm at. He's going to have to come to my world. It doesn't work that way. He invades our world with his presence. You hear what I'm saying? He invades our world with his presence. And when he does that, he invites us to join in in what he's doing. We could say, listen, I'm just going to stay here. I, I was used to God this day and mark it on the calendar. Oh, mm -hmm. Good deal. <laughs> We're done here. <laughs> but I would suggest to you that God wants to do amazing things. <coughs> he's done it in so many different lives. I've watched it in, in the church here. I've watched it in so many different people that would dare to say that I'm going to reject the things that I'm thinking I'm going to adhere to what the Bible says. Amen? Amen. Did you receive that? I I say you receive it because you understand what I said? You reject the things that you're thinking and accept the things that God says. Amen? So you have to look into the Word, and sometimes when you look into the Word, it doesn't make a lick of sense because you know why? Because it's supernatural. When God asks you to maybe have an impact in somebody's life and your resources are so tight you don't even know how you're going to pay for your bills and he asks you to impact somebody else's world, that doesn't make a lick of sense, does it? But in God's economy, it makes a bunch of sense. It makes a bunch of sense when he's going to bless you in another way that you don't see on the horizon. And you know, the crazy thing is it's not just about blessing. It's not just about the things that you know, we could possibly see in the immediate time. It's the things that God is doing when well, we're doing what he's called us to despite what we understand that bears fruit many generations later. Many generations later. You know, so many times in funeral services I hear some incredible things. And you know, overwhelmingly, without fail, I'm always thinking, I wonder if they knew that while they were alive. Hmm. Powerful, huh? I wonder if they knew that when they were alive. I wonder if they realized that the words spoke to them when they were young, penetrated a heart to the point that changed the way they did something. Or maybe it was, maybe it was the, the ability to press through another day because of the encouragement that somebody gave them. Maybe it was something that they did sacrificially and it was seen and it was appreciated beyond what you would imagine, but did they ever hear it with their ear? And so, so many times with God, it's that way. So many times there's things that are going on He's calling us to today and He molds us to this, this 
character that goes down roads that sometimes are unpleasant, but he promises he'll never leave us or forsake us. So he's with us on the journey, and as we travel along that way, it's having an impact in lives. And sometimes, friends, I promise you, you will not hear about it this side of heaven. But there's going to be a wonderful time when we get there, isn't it? Oh, yeah. You hear what I'm saying? <coughs> what a waste if we go through this life and it's for what this life has to offer. Paul said, we're to be pitied most if that were the case. But it's not the case. God's called us to this life, and the richness that we look for is found in living according to the plans that he has for us. If you look at some of these characters, I have Moses here. Moses was a murderer, but despite his past, God still used him to set his chosen people, the Israelites, free from bondage. Amen? Amen. David. He was a murderer and an adulterer. And when God turned his life around, the scripture says, he became a man after God's own heart. Amen? Amen. Folks, i got to tell you something. I understand the Apostle Paul when he said, when I try to do good there, evil stands with me. There's a war going on, folks that's waged within us. And constantly we find this battle inside of us. And we try to press through so many times and it's not as easy as it would appear unless we cling to the strength that comes from Christ alone. Because you're going to go down roads at times that are unpleasant, that in our human heart we're going to want vengeance and God's going to say, turn the other cheek. He's going to tell us to have an impact in ways that we couldn't even perceive. When I was young, I was very foolish. <coughs> and so for me, growing up in a house with six kids, mom, dad, limited budget, we understood what it was to figure your way around a lot of things. And the hand of my dad was pretty uh, straightforward, and he was a no-nonsense individual. And as the years went on, and I found my way into the drug culture, and, and I see in all sorts of different things that I regret today, but nothing I regret worse than seeing the tears of my mother weeping over my behavior, standing at the steps of the house looking up at her crying when I was on LSD. So many experiences that I could just get lost in and flood my mind. But instead I choose to remember a different aspect of my relationship with my mother. I remember her getting mad at me for a different reason. She got mad at me because I was telling her that Jesus died for her. <laughs> She got mad at me several times for that, in fact. And my body get really furious about much, but she was mad with me at that. But I was persistent with her and persistent. And I remember the day that my brother was with her and he had the opportunity to just pray with her and she asked Jesus to save her. She didn't know she knew who God was. She was in the church. She knew who Jesus was. She heard the stories, but she never connected the dots and realized that he died on that cross for her personally. Mm -hmm. And that what he had offered, she had to receive that. And that's why you hear me when I, I'll say amen, and then sometimes I say, do you receive that? Because it's easy to say amen and just say amen for you, right? Not for me, right? I receive that as in, to all who call upon the name of the Lord, they'll be saved. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. <clears throat> it's with the heart that you believe and are justified. It's with the mouth that you confess and are saved. It's something that we do individually. It's not something that just blankets over us like a flood. It's something he did personally for us personally in order that we would receive personally and would change our lives personally and have an impact on us that we could truly be new creatures in Christ. That we truly could walk a new life. We truly could be charted out on courses that we ordinarily would have turned from. But instead, because he told us to do so, we'll do so. 
And because of that, you'll hear lives change time and time again. I was a fool back in the days when I was doing all the chemicals and all the things that were terrible. I was a fool, but now I'm a fool for Christ. Amen. Amen. If I'm going to be a fool, it's going to be for the one who redeemed me. And when I tell you that, there's a difference in who I am, and it's not because I decided, well, I'm just going to be a church guy now, and this is what I'm going to Listen, there's a lot of lives a lot easier than what I'm involved in, folks. But the burden that I have on my heart for what God wants to do is so giant, I can do nothing else. And what I'm suggesting to you is to come to a place that we could just let God have that freedom with us. He said, listen, I've made a lot of mistakes. But I don't think I could ever be somebody that would be you know, able to make any difference inside the church. I don't think I could do anything that would have any significance for eternity. How about this one? The Apostle Paul, known as Saul, he was a murderer, a persecutor of Christians, and he turned around and he became the greatest preacher of the word that I, he's one of my heroes. He changed more lives because of his persistent willingness to be used of God. He was beaten, torn up, shipwrecked. All different things happened to him, and he considered it an honor of knowing Christ and the power of his son. Because he was a religious man. And then he became in a relationship with Christ. He went from a Pharisee trying to persecute those who were just laying their lives openly before God and receiving what God prepared for us as the payment of our sins. Jesus died on the cross. Until Jesus knocked him off his high horse and Paul had a new attitude. Amen? But when I think of this picture in the church, how about the ones that walked with Jesus on a regular basis? How about when you think about Peter? Peter was a character. If you turn with me, if you have your Bibles to Matthew, the 16th chapter. Matthew 16, 21 through 23. From time to time, <clears throat> on, on Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the teachers of the law. And then he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, never shall this happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely the concerns of humans. Peter starts hearing something that sounds a little different. It's kind of like in some churches, you come in the door, and God's got a burden on your heart. You walk in the door, and you start to tell them, and they're all, oh, no, 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 no. Not here. You're not doing that. that. There's no place for that in the church. Jesus was coming and he's beginning to lay out for what would become the church, the disciples. The picture that they needed to get their minds wrapped around because he's telling them, I'm going to the cross. And you folks are the church. And Peter's taking him aside, well, wait a minute, I think we got our wires crossed here a little bit. <laughs> this ain't ever going to happen. <clears throat> Jesus tells him in very, very clear language, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block for me. You know what I don't want to be, folks? I don't want to be a stumbling block for God's plan in the lives of his church and that year. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be a stumbling block. I want to see what God wants to do accomplished. And I, and I think that, the truth be known, I think you probably would say the same thing, amen? You want to see God do what he wants to do through your life, and you don't want to be a stumbling block for that mission, do you? You want to be able to see great things happen. So you think about Peter, and he's got a very clear picture. Jesus slams him with this, boom. 
You are on the wrong frequency, dude. You're dialed into what's going on in the here and now, and I'm talking about what's to come. You're focused on the wrong things, and here it is. And Jesus hammers with it. You think Peter got it? You think he got it? No. He didn't get it. Because you understand in the garden when they came to arrest Jesus, guess who drew his sword? He cut the ear off one of the guards. Jesus healed him. Jesus healed him. And he didn't get it then. Jesus picks the ear up and puts it right back on the guy. He could stop the whole thing. There's, you've got dramatic experience unfolding right before the disciples. Jesus heals the guard. Peter sees it. There's another situation that began to unfold. As this whole crucifixion began to take the picture to unfold in the way that Jesus was trying to tell his disciples it was going to do. Jesus told Peter that he was going to deny him three times. Before that rooster crowed. The tragedy in the picture is when you're in the midst of the circumstances of our lives and the pressure starts coming in and around us, we forget what we're supposed to be involved in and who we're supposed to keep our eyes on. The Bible says keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. When we realize our lives and the stage or the platform that God gives us, it is intended that we keep our eyes on the author and the perfecter, and that's Jesus. Because when we get into the circumstances and things start getting crazy and your circle of influence or people that don't like you or whatever start coming around you and saying, hey, aren't you one of the disciples? And the next thing out of your mouth, I never do. That's heavy. Three times. Three times. And the Bible says that Peter looked in the eyes of Jesus and he remembered what he had said. Powerful. Jesus' love is amazing, though, and his love for Peter is the same as his love for any one of us. When we realize he wants us to come from a place of our own confusion and religious ideas and come to a place that we can begin to understand really what he wants to do in and through our lives, and he wants to do it for us to take a minute and listen, meditate on it, and then proceed in prayer. You hear what I said? We come to conclusions immediately. We start to hear something. Oh, I got it. I got it. You don't got it. Peter didn't get it. We don't get it. When the pressure starts surrounding us, the first thing we look at is the circumstance. We take our eyes off the author and the perfecter, Jesus. He's got a mission for us, folks. And in the midst of the mission, there's all sorts of very real things going on, like sickness and heartaches and family breakdowns and financial <coughs> distress and all sorts of other things that can invade your life. Amen. And in the midst of every bit of that, he wants to still accomplish this purpose. He wants to do amazing things in and through your life. And if our eyes are focused on the things that are right here, that our five senses can handle, we're in a world of trouble. We're in, a, we're in a, a completely powerless position. Because no matter what you're drawing your strength from that's on the here and now on this planet Earth, it will perish. The only thing that's going to last is our hope in Jesus. When we're coming up against these problems and we're trying to accomplish things, we need to understand that He wants to accomplish things in our life. Let me read you another scripture. I just want to make one more point here. It's in John in the 21st chapter, John 21. Verse 15 and following. Many of your Bibles will say Jesus reinstates Peter. The man finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John. 
Do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. A third time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. First thing that I think of is three other times that something happened. Three times Jesus asked him about this, and we're talking about a love that we don't comprehend. And Peter's racing in with an answer, yes, I love you. Do you understand? Love you this much that I would deny you. Love you this much that I didn't count the cost. Love you this much that the things that I put as priority were above you. <laughs> Do you understand? In the midst of what God calls us to is to have a love that is so giant that goes beyond our comprehension. Giant enough that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While he was on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. When you realize the power in, in that love that he wants us to comprehend, Peter, do you love me? In other words, do you comprehend what you're going to come against? Do you comprehend the magnitude of what I'm asking you? Don't give me some quick answer. Yes, I do, Lord. Think about what I want to try to accomplish if you'll hear me for what I'm saying. Because somebody's life hangs in the balance based on your answer. Because when it comes time to feed this little lamb that's hard to love, that's hard to take care of, that needs you to be there time and time again, maybe this one needs to be rebuked. And that's not easy to do. Maybe they're stuck in the way that they want to think and perceive things, and they won't move from that. But you've got to walk with them and teach them what it means to listen to his voice, which means you're going to be committed. It means you're going to set aside your own agenda when it invades your world with this little lamb. Do you love me? And feed my lambs. So many times I've looked at the situations and circumstances that invade my thinking. I'm the preacher, folks. It's time. We need to turn around, don't we? We need to be able to come from what we think or perceive to a new way of thinking. We need to be able to accomplish God's purpose because he has already won the battle. The victory's already been won on the cross. So what he calls us to in the here and now has eternal consequence. And he's empowered us to do so, but we have to change our thinking from the things that we perceive as our limitations and grasp the fact that he said that I could do, that the Bible tells us we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. All things. All things. Be able to accomplish amazing things beyond the realm of our imagination. But guess what? We go from this place where I'm standing right here and I can't accomplish it. There's no way I can move from this place into a realm of I don't understand, I don't know any of the answers to right here, but faith takes me here. Do you hear what I'm saying? Faith takes me to a new place that I start saying that whatever it is, God, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. In the things that you've called me to, I'm going to keep my eyes on the little lamb that needs to care. And no matter what it is, sometimes it's as simple as a kind word. Sometimes it's as drawn out or difficult of a life that is paralyzed from thinking that's been put into the mind of somebody for many, many, many decades. So every time you read, it feels like you take a step forward and four or five backwards until the time that God just finally gets a hold of a heart and we surrender the rebellion that's inside of here and we come to a place that says I'm not going to try to disqualify I'm not going to look at prophecies with contempt 
and I'm going to listen to what God says, and then from there, guess what? We start making forward motion to accomplish His purpose. But regardless of where you're at on that realm of understanding, and regardless of where the little lamb is, or whoever it is that God has called you to have an influence on with your life, wherever it is, it requires us to keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And understanding that He wants to do amazing things with us. Are you guys ready for a turnaround? Are you? Amen. Hello? I can't say is this thing on. I'll sock myself in the face. Back in the days of the microphones, I could bat them. Some of you are saying, I wish that preacher would sock himself in the face. Listen, God wants to do amazing things with us. He really does, folks. It's Mother's Day, and mothers are an inspiration. They're an inspiration. They go through many, many different things. And no matter where you're at on that spectrum, you know, whether you're a mother or you're on the other side of the spectrum, as I'm looking at it as a son looking at what I did to my mother and the things she had to forgive me through and everything else. The one thing that I want you to hear this morning is no matter where you are, guess what? Today is the day that you can have a brand new That you can walk out from this place and leave all the baggage of the past sitting at the foot of the cross. And you can walk out the door forgiven, listen, forgiven, with a mission in mind. That God wants to do amazing things. There's a passage in Lamentations in the third chapter. It says this, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassion never fails. They are new every morning, great is your faith in us. That's powerful, folks. How about you need a new beginning? Are you at a place in your life that you see yourself and realize the frailties of who we really are? Do you realize the battles that go on right in our own heads? Day after day they wage on. Some of you I have time to spend some time with. Some of you I've had conversations with over periods of time some of our devotions right here in this building. So it's what is it? Battle every single day. Yup. It is. It is. It's a well worthwhile battle though, folks. It's well worthwhile because you know the craziest thing? I was looking at some pictures. We were out in the trailer out here and we moved somebody in. And in the trailer was some pictures that were left behind from something else that they had moved. And there's some there, there are people that I'm affiliated with way back. You know, and in the moment, if I don't look at the picture and I just think about the events in my head, it seems like yesterday. But when I look at the picture, it looks like a lifetime ago. Do you hear what I'm saying? Years are passing fast, folks. They're passing quickly. And the things that God wants to accomplish in us is contingent on us having a mind that's renewed. He makes changes in us when we set aside what we think we understand and we take on what his, what his word says, the truth. And then a change in our, who we are is seen by a people that's looking. Are you with me? Where are you at this morning? Where do you find yourself? Is this a time in your life where you take a look and say, man, I heard some things in there today and I, I think that maybe, maybe I should, uh, maybe I should consider it. Maybe I can, should consider that maybe God wants to do something with my life. And maybe, maybe in the stories that I heard, maybe some of the characters in Scripture, God didn't give up on them, He won't give up on me either. And even in the midst of what's going on, even in, in the craziness of the day, I can entertain something new. Maybe I can entertain the fact that God will take my life and, and I'll listen for him right now. And I'll, I'll get my nose into the Bible. And then, and then when, I, when I'm confronted with the word and I see something and he tells me, then I'll just do it. Do you hear what I'm saying, folks? The definition of word insanity is doing the same thing the same way and expecting another outcome. When you look into the mirror of God's word, we see ourselves and he instructs our lives. Let's not be insane in the way we deal with it. Let's look at it and do what it says. And 
amazing things he'll do with us. Amen? Amen. In this church, we always give an invitation. That just simply means that there's an opportunity for you to come up and pray with somebody up here about whatever God has already said in your heart. As the music plays, in this time of invitation, we can come. Father, thank you as you have given an opportunity here. I pray that your word has met fertile hearts and that your purpose, God, it would be achieved. Would you continue that work that you're doing? God, would you manifest it right here before we leave this place? We ask it in Jesus' name. Would you come with the music place?
Father, thank you for this time. God, as we survey them, our hearts and we, and we lay them out before you, God, we just pray that you're pleased with the meditation of what we've taken from this day. God, would you help us as we go from this place, help us to cling to the truths of your word, help us to find our identity and who you say we are instead of this world. And God, would you keep us safe and bring us back again. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.